PhotoSketch, photocentric 3D modeling plugin for Google SketchUp. We present an intuitive plugin for Google SketchUp that allows users to quickly build photo texture 3D models of existing buildings. The plugin is called PhotoSketch because it heavily leverages photographs of a scene to help the user build the model. The plugin uses a set of overlapping scene images as shown here. The first step in this process is camera calibration. By taking pictures of a checkerboard image from various viewpoints, we can automatically solve for unknown intrinsic camera parameters such as focal length, principal point, and radial lens distortion. These images shown here must be taken once before capturing images of the scene. The first step in constructing any photo sketch model is to create a new project. Click on the new project icon and enter Park Avenue in the dialog window. The file browser now appears. Navigate to the Example folder under the PhotoSketch plugin in SketchUp. Select any of the five scene photos in the set and press Open. The system will then read all of the JPEG files in that folder. Since we pre-calibrated the camera, the intrinsic parameters will be loaded and displayed. Press OK to preview the thumbnails of the input images. Now you are ready to perform camera pose recovery directly from these images. This will solve for the position and orientation of the camera associated with each input image. This means that with respect to the model, we will now be able to stand in SketchUp in the same position and hold the camera in the same orientation as the photographer did when each of those pictures were taken. We next must recover the camera pose for each input image. This requires us to measure the motion between salient features in the input images. Click on the camera icon to begin camera pose recovery. The first step in this process will be feature extraction. Finding the most salient features across all of the input images is among the most time-consuming processes within PhotoSketch. The status bar at the bottom of the window displays the progress of the feature extraction stage. Be patient. This may take a few minutes. Once this stage is complete, a pop-up window will appear to prompt the user to continue to the matching stage. If you do not choose to continue, the system will be able to save the results thus far so that you may continue from this point in another session. The same preview window we had seen earlier is now updated to display the number of features extracted from each photo. Here we see some examples of these extracted features. By clicking Yes, we proceed to the feature matching stage. The extracted features are then matched from image to image. This is also a time-consuming process within PhotoSketch. The status bar at the bottom of the window displays the progress of the feature matching stage. Be patient, this may take a few minutes. Once this stage is complete, a pop-up window will appear to prompt the user to continue to the pose recovery and floor alignment stage. If you do not choose to continue, the system will be able to save the results thus far so that you may continue from this point in another session. The same preview window we had seen earlier is now updated to display the number of match features between consecutive photos. Here we see correspondence between match features among several pairs of images. You must establish three correspondence points among the two displayed images. These points must lie in a plane that is parallel to the ground. A magnified view of the pixel neighborhood is shown about the selected point to help you accurately pinpoint the corners. The established correspondence among a pair of points is depicted by a yellow line. This process is repeated two more times. When you are finished, click the right mouse button and select Done. This places you in the position of the photographer that took the first picture. Notice that the aligned floor plane is now visible. By zooming out using the standard SketchUp navigation tools, we can examine the results of camera pose recovery. Notice the positions and orientations of the set of cameras that were used to acquire the input photos. Each camera is depicted using a frust dump. Camera pose recovery occurs simultaneously with the recovery of a sparse 3D point cloud as shown here. Each 3D point in the cloud corresponds to an extracted image feature that was matched among multiple views. Click on the Snap to 3D Point icon and select the 3D point to snap the floor plane to that position. Then, select the 2D rectangle icon to begin sketching a rectangular footprint 
by clicking three points on the corners of the building facade. Notice that this drawing mode is constrained to the snapped floor plane. A magnified view of the pixel neighborhood is shown about the selected point to help you accurately pinpoint the corners. Rectangular footprints are common for many buildings, which is why we use them here. This process of snapping the floor plane and drawing the rectangles is repeated for all of the footprints that are visible in this photo. When you draw the first edge of the rectangle, try to draw the edge along the vanishing lines. In this example, they tend to lie along the edges of the windows. Our system allows you to switch from one viewpoint to another. Due to camera pose recovery, a footprint drawn in one viewpoint will appear registered in the other viewpoints and will be aligned with the sparse 3D point cloud. Notice that the footprints were each snapped to the heights of the selected 3D points. Click the floor layer icon to hide the floor. Click the point cloud layer icon to hide the 3D point cloud. Now click the push pull icon and select the face to extrude. This extrusion operation needs to be repeated to all footprints to create 3D volumes that are embedded in the scene. You may quickly switch from one viewpoint to another by clicking on the next camera and previous camera icons. It's important to note that if you dive into the scene beyond the textured frustrum, you can see the untextured 3D models. In this example, we see the model from the same vantage point as the photograph. Notice that the alignment is perfect. Now, we jump to a new vantage point to see the roof. We use the Taper to Line tool to insert a line so that we can lift it to taper the roof as shown here. We now repeat the process from a different vantage point to taper the tower to a point. To verify that the geometric refinement correctly matches with the photos, we view the refined models from the different frustums. One main application of our plugin is for users who want to add their content to online mapping systems. The user can georeference their model by aligning the model footprint with georeference satellite imagery and then uploading it onto Google Earth. Notice that translation, rotation, and scaling is necessary for proper alignment. Use the native SketchUp tools to perform this alignment. Here we see the result of an uploaded model on Google Earth. This model was completed in approximately 24 minutes. 3 minutes for automatic camera calibration, 1 minute for floor alignment, and 20 minutes for modeling. On average, our models typically have between 50 to 100 polygons. Such lightweight 3D models are highly suitable for transmission and rendering on web-based applications such as the Google Earth application shown here.